For the first portion of today's lab, I'm going to make up an approximately 0.1 molar solution of sodium hydroxide. After I've made up my 0.1 molar solution of sodium hydroxide, I'm actually going to standardize it, and the reason is because I cannot get the exact mass of sodium hydroxide due to the fact that it's a very hygroscopic solid. And what that means is that it takes up moisture out of the air pretty much as soon as I remove it from the commercially available container. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my about one gram, and you can see it's a little shiny. I, and I just put this in here probably two minutes ago, and I can already tell that it's, it's taken up moisture from the air. So if I had about a gram, it's just probably over a little, little more than a gram right now. So I'm going to zero my balance, tear it, a little bit more. There. So even at, try as I may to get exactly one gram, I'm not going to be able to do it. For one, they're in pellets, so I can't get as granular a measurement as I would like. I can't exactly weigh 1.000 grams of sodium hydroxide. Additionally, the balance is going to continuously drift upward, but it's not the balance drifting. It's actually the sodium hydroxide is gaining mass from the atmospheric moisture. So now that I've got approximately one gram, 1.040 grams of sodium hydroxide, I'm going to take a clean 250 milliliter volumetric flask. And so to make up a 0.1 molar solution, I would need one gram of sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to tear this And as you can see, I've got 1.031, and that number should drift upwards as that sodium hydroxide takes in moisture from the air. Now that I've got it in my volumetric flask, I'm going to add approximately 100 to 150 milliliters of water to dissolve the sodium hydroxide. So I've got deionized water here. I'm going to go ahead and carefully add the water. About halfway, maybe a third or so. I'm going to give it a swirl, and I'm going to get this stuff to dissolve. Once I get it dissolved, I can then add the rest of the water I can do that rather quickly, and when I get to the very end, there's a line here, and I'm going to add the last milliliter or so via a transfer pipette. So that way I do not go over. As I get close to the line, I want to slow down and be very careful and watch the meniscus. And of course, we look at the bottom of the meniscus and try and get that to line up exactly with that line. We don't want to go over. And there. I've got exactly 250 milliliters with approximately one gram of sodium hydroxide dissolved in it. That should give us a 0.1 molar solution. So I've got my volume, I'm gonna give it a few tips upside down, make sure, again, it's well mixed. And there I have it. I've got an approximately 0.1 molar. I'm gonna sodium hydroxide solution. 
Now that we have made up our approximately 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution, we're going to move on to the primary standard portion of the lab. So as you'll notice today, I'm in front of a different balance. And what this is, is an analytical balance. So normally our balances go out to one milligram or three decimal places with respect to the gram. So this goes out to four decimal places or 0.1 milligrams. Okay, so four decimal places here. So in addition, so in addition to it being much more accurate, it's also much more expensive. So it's 10 times more accurate, right? It goes from one milligram, which we have in the teaching lab, to 0.1 milligram. That's an order of magnitude difference. Well, this is an order of magnitude more expensive. So this, um, some of the features of this balance is it has draft shields. These are glass doors that prevent any drafts from my breath or atmospheric uh, climate control, things like that, causing that balance mass to drift. Um, it's got some wheels on the side that allow me to level the balance and there's a leveling bubble on the back much like a construction carpenter's level and so this is is very precisely leveled next it's on a, a, a very heavy duty very heavy reinforced marble like table that itself cannot vibrate and the reason i would want that is this balance is so accurate that lawnmowers, trucks, and stuff like that could actually vibrate this room such that I would be able to see it on the balance, but given that I've got this reinforced table, that can't happen. Finally, this balance has an internal calibration mechanism, so it goes through a self-calibration every few hours when it's on. So it does that, that makes it a lot more expensive. And finally, we double check that calibration every so often with a calibration weight. Now, this calibration rate weight is certified by the National Institute for Standards and Technology, and it's very expensive little weight. It's, the balance is so accurate that by touching the weight with my fingers without using these tweezers, I would actually change the mass of this little, ma of this little weight. So we only ever touch those with these tweezers and then it goes back inside this nice little carrying thing here. So that's a little bit about the balance. Now the next thing is our primary standard. So today for our primary standard we're going to use KHP or potassium hydrogen phthalate and it's got a structure that looks like this. It's got a molecular mass of 204.23 so that's 204.23 grams per mole and the powder or crystal looks like this. It's extremely pure. That's what you want in a primary standard. You want it to be very pure because if it's extremely pure, nothing else is in there that may or may not react with what I'm titrating against the sodium hydroxide. Um, some other features you want your primary standard to be soluble in water. We're going to be doing our titration aqueous or so it's soluble in water you want it to be stable and then very importantly you want the primary standard to be not hygroscopic finally it will react rapidly with our sodium hydroxide so there we've covered a little bit about the balance the balance room and some features of primary standards now i'm going to go ahead and begin by i've got three trials available here, uh, three Erlenmeyers, which I've labeled already, and I've got a little note sheet here. So I'm gonna open up my balance door and carefully take the mass of the first Erlenmeyer. So 93.0208 grams, and now I'm going to add approximately a half a gram of KHP to this. 
So again, this will give me my gross mass, and you'll get to take the difference between what I read here and the empty mass of the Erlenmeyer to get my mass of KHP. So the gross mass of the KHP plus the Erlenmeyer is 93.5298. Now to each of these three Erlenmeyers, I am going to add 100 milliliters about of water. Finally, I'm going to add two drops of phenolphthalein to each flask. And this is the indicator. So, once this stuff becomes basic, it'll turn pink. So there we have our three samples ready for titration. In the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of this stuff called parafilm. This stuff is wonderful in a lab. Uh, rather than using rubber stoppers or anything, I've got this. It's like saran wrap, but it's a great polymer that wraps around the top so that I don't lose anything there like that. So this stuff's called parafilm, so I parafilm the top. Basically, lab saran wrap, but better. And boom. There are my three primary sta standards ready to go for titration against sodium hydroxide. We'll see you in the next portion of the video. Everybody, welcome back. Uh, the first portion of our experiment, we went ahead and made up our 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution. We've got that there. And the next portion, we made up our primary standard, which is KHP, potassium hydrogen phthalate. We've got that here ready to go with our water and our indicator, phenolphthalein, in there. And what we have here is a burette. And the burette is calibrated and has graduations and it says TD and what that means is to deliver. So when I open the spout and allow the liquid to come out, it actually will deliver exactly how much I read from here, which is different than the uh, other kind, which is to contain. And so now we're ready to begin our titration. Okay, so we'll begin by measuring our initial volume and if we look closely at the bottom of the meniscus, it reads 1.85 milliliters. Okay, so to begin the titration, we've got our Erlenmeyer underneath the burette ready to collect our sodium hydroxide, which will react with the primary standard KHP. I've got it over a magnetic stir plate and a little stirring magnet in there so that I get nice agitation. And we are ready to begin. I'm going to crack the stopcock and get probably four or five drops per second initially and get a nice flow going. So now we're keeping an eye on the volume as it's going and I'm going to anticipate that we'll probably use around 25 mils total so I'll slow that down once I get to about 25 milliliters delivered. Okay, so I've got my drops. I slowed down the drops and I can see pink beginning to develop. If I turn the stirrer on, it mixes it away more quickly. But you can clearly see that it is turning pink for just a moment as I get towards my endpoint. And now I've got a very slow drip rate. And as you can see, that last drop is actually just hanging there and I have a very slight pink. The camera probably can't pick it up but I'm very very close to the end point right now. So a little trick we can do is the water that I add to this won't do anything to the reaction so I can chase that drip that's just hanging there off of the tip of the burette 
into the Erlenmeyer and you can see that it, it fleetingly changed the color. So that's just a kind of a way to cut the drips right in half to get a half a drop. A little bit more precise that way. Okay, so we are very close to the end point. I'm gonna go one drop at a time until the color changes. So very carefully, just gonna barely open that stopcock. And there I had one drop and I can see a very faint pink. A half a more drop and it's pink. So for our final volume reading, at our endpoint, we've got 27.26 milliliters of sodium hydroxide delivered. All right, for this portion of the experiment, we have got our now standardized sodium hydroxide solution from part one of the experiment. That's loaded back up into the burette, and we have an unknown acid. This is HCl of unknown concentration. I've got 25 milliliters of this HCl solution and 75 mils of water and two drops of our indicator phenolphthalein. Now we can begin our titration. So our beginning volume at this point is 2.71 milliliters. And we're ready to begin our titration. I'm going to turn the stirrer on and get a nice flow going from my burette. So I've got a nice flow. I expect my end point to be around 25 milliliters, so I'm gonna slow it down around 18 to 20 milliliters. Again, we're approaching the end point, so I've slowed the drop rate down to one drop at a time. I'm gonna slow the rate right down to get to the very last drop. We've got a pink solution. It's a very faint pink, and now we're going to measure the volume to see what our endpoint is. Okay, for our endpoint, we've got 29.22 milliliters. Okay, so we're at the endpoint, and I'm going to add a little bit more base to this so that we can see a more vivid pink. Let's go. All right. 